Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be kind of making a part two of open versus locked differentials. I had a lot of um, controversy kind of going on. People weren't quite understanding what I was saying in my open versus locked differential video when I said that uh, locked differentials can vary the torque which goes to each wheel and open differentials uh, basically it's 50-50 split of the torque to each wheels. Now the problem was people were saying okay if you have a lock differential and both wheels are rotating at the same speed then obviously they're getting the same amount of torque. Well that's not exactly true, in fact it's not true at all. And so with an open differential if one is spinning faster that means it's getting all the torque? No, actually it's still getting half the torque. And I'm going to try and explain that and use some math in doing so try and make it more clear. So, what we've got here is a differential and it has one tire on the pavement and one tire on the snow. Now before you watch the rest of this, you should probably watch my video on differentials and I'll include an annotation and a link in the description. And you should also watch my video on open versus lock differentials so that you can kind of get a background for what I'm talking about here. Okay, so we've got our differential, one tire on the pavement, one tire on the snow. Now this is our locked differential, so basically I'll, you don't even need to know how it works. You've got a pinion and that connects to a, ri a ring gear and it just rotates these two tires. They're connected completely so they both will always rotate at the same speed. Okay, so here's a question or a equation that I've used fairly frequently in my videos. It's a great equation. Force equals the frictional coefficient times the normal force. So what this means is the maximum force that you can apply, that this tire can apply, is equal to the frictional coefficient between the tire and the pavement and the normal force or the weight on top of that tire. So, uh, for example, we've got this uh, car here that has a thousand pounds going down on that rear tire. So it's got two thousand pounds on the rear, one thousand on each side combined. Or if you want uh, metric units, every time I say pounds, just say newtons in your head, a um, thousand pound, pounds of force is equivalent to about 4400 newtons. So we've got a frictional coefficient of one between the rubber and the pavement and over here we've got another tire that's in the snow. Now remember this is the log differential so both tires will rotate at the same speed. So the frictional coefficient of the rubber and the snow is 0.3. So both of them have the same normal force, which is a thousand pound force uh, on top of these. So the maximum force that this left side can apply to the ground, that this tire can push against the ground without spinning, is a thousand pounds of force. So on this right side, since our frictional coefficient is 0.3, the maximum force that this tire can apply to the snow without spinning is 300 pounds of force. Okay, now, why does that mean that the torque will be split differently? So, up until the point that you reach 300 pounds of force on both tires, the torque will be split 50-50 because neither one of them are attempting to spin. So there's, no, there's nothing resisting that. So when you send a greater force than 300 pounds of force uh, against that against the ground there and this tire wants to spin what prevents it? Well what prevents it from spinning is the fact that this tire over here can handle much more than 300 pounds of force. So it resists this wanting to rotate and when it resists that's when the torque transfers over to this one. So the maximum that it could possibly do, since this one can handle a thousand pounds of force and this one can handle 300 pounds of force, the maximum that this lock differential can apply to the ground is 1300 pounds of force given the weight over those rear tires. Now, if it exceeds that, then yes, both tires could spin um, and once again, if it goes lower than 300 on each side, then it, the torque will be split 50-50. But if you were sending the maximum possible amount of force back to these two tires, then this one will get 77% of the torque and this one will get 23. Where does that 77 come from? 1,000 plus 300, that's the total amount of force 
that you can apply to the ground, and this tire is applying 1,000. So 1,000 divided by 1,300, 77%. 300 divided by 1,300, 23%. Okay, so that's how the torque distribution is going to work with the rear different with the uh, locked differential. Now for the open differential. So with an open differential, torque is always even between the two. We know this because when, so we've got our pinion here and it's rotating this ring gear. We already know how this works because we've watched my video on differentials. So this pinion gear pushes with equal force against both of these drive shafts. So what we're looking at here is basically we're going to take this and rotate it up there. We're going to have this side on ice, and we're going to have this side on the pavement. So this pinion gear is pushing with equal force on both of these drive shafts. Now the difference between this open differential and this lock differential is this pinion gear can rotate around one of these uh, drive shafts. So for example, this pavement has uh, a lot more grip than this ice. So once you send, okay, so we're going to have, once again, 300 pound force between the tire and the snow. That's the maximum. So once we send a 300 pound force to this side on the ice, it's, and we exceed that, this side, this drive shaft, is going to want to spin. So what's going to happen is, this side will rotate faster, and this side here will still be locked up. So if you hold this one, this pinion gear can rotate around that. It's still pushing on it, but it's not great enough for it to spin. Whereas it is great enough for it to spin this one. So then you'll get 50% of the torque going to that side and 50% of the torque going to that side. So if we take the same example and we have a maximum of a 300 pound force that we can apply to the snow. I said ice here, but we'll say snow. So we've got that 300 pound force, then the maximum that the other side can receive because it will spin is also 300 pounds of force. So you can see the problem here is when you add those two forces together, those 300 pound forces, you get a total of 600 pounds of force that you can apply to the ground, the maximum. Well, over here our maximum was 1300. Now there's another problem. Once this tire starts spinning on the snow, the frictional coefficient goes down. So something that's already sliding can slide easier than something that isn't sliding and you're trying to push it to slide. So what that means is the frictional coefficient, once the force on this tire, on this tire that's on the ice, exceeds 300 pounds of force at the ground, then it will start to spin. Once it starts spinning, the frictional coefficient goes down to 0.2, and so the maximum force you can then put onto the ground is 200 pounds of force. So then the maximum total that you can get is 400 pounds of force because you've got 200 on one side, 200 on the other. So you can see that you've got 400 pounds of force that you can put down as a max once the tire starts spinning with an open differential versus 1300 pounds of force that you can put down as a max with a lock differential. So the lock differential in off-road conditions, you can put down a lot more force, a lot more torque. So that's the benefit of a locked differential. And that is why limited slip differentials, which I'm going to get into in my next video, are so important. Because what they allow to do is they allow you to change the speed between one side and the other so you don't have bind and you don't scrub one of your tires going around the corner. But they allow you to transfer torque to the tire with more grip.